Hello, it's Matt and welcome to Collaboration Coach. And this is the March edition of The Radar Show, where we look at what's new and what's coming in Office 365. This month, we're gonna show you some new features in SharePoint and Teams, but we're gonna get started with Mover. Mover is a cloud-based migration tool for Office 365. Mover was bought by Microsoft in October 2019. And this month, it has been released globally as a free Microsoft service. Mover supports moving files from cloud-based storage like Dropbox, Box, and Google Drive, and also file shares. But right now, it doesn't support on-premises SharePoint farms. For that, you can still use the free SharePoint migration tool. With Mover, everything is managed in the cloud through a web app. So that means there's no need to download and install a desktop tool. I've been doing some basic testing and it seems very simple to use. You can just choose your source and your target and then either run the migration straight away or schedule it for later. And once you've chosen where to copy from and to, it will move all the files over for you. I'll put the links to these apps in the description and I'll do a more detailed review of Mover on the channel soon. Let's move on to Teams and the first new feature I wanna show you is Tags. You'll probably know that you can app mention your post to individuals and teams or groups of people. So for example, here I am in the retail team and I can go at retail and it will suggest the retail team as someone to target the post to. Tagging allows you to create groups of people within your team. So a tag is like a category that you can apply to individuals to group them up. So it could be like a skill, for example, or a job role. As an example, if I just delete that, I'm going to hit the ellipsis here on the retail team and go to manage tags. Now you'll see here I've created a couple already, one called designers, one called producers. And I can create new ones from here. And I can also manage the members or the people that have that tag applied to them just by typing their names in here and adding them. Managing tags is fairly straightforward. And once you have your tags, when you create a post, you can at mention that tag. So if I start typing designers here, it will suggest designers to me and say, this is a tag and it has six people within it. I can see all the people who have tags at a glance. If I go to the manage team page. So if I hit the ellipsis and go manage team, and I can see all the team members here. And if I just scroll down, you'll see in this column here, all the people who have tags added to them and then I can also add new tags if I want to as well. Last thing is there is also some settings so within the team you can control who can create tags so for example by default it's owners only but you could allow your members to create tags as well. So the next feature is called share to outlook and what this does is allow you to share your posts from Teams to email. So this might be useful if you need to share something with someone who's not in Teams, not using it, or perhaps not following it and getting updates. It shows up in two places. First of all, in the posts in your channels. So if I go to this post here, choose the ellipsis, you can see I've got this share to Outlook option. And the same in chat, I can go to any post and I can hit the ellipsis and choose share to Outlook. When I do that, it gives me the ability to set up the email so I can address it, I can add to it, but it also adds this team section here. I can format it and I've got these uh, options at the top here so I can add attachments, change sensitivity and so on. So I've got everything I would have if I was using Outlook. So what happens when the receiver gets that email, it looks like this. This is an example from a channel conversation. You can see one post in the channel has been sent over and I can go to Teams and that will open up Teams and take me to that particular post. And you can see it there in yellow. And then for the one-to-one -one chats, it's just slightly different, but you can see this is from a chat conversation with a certain person. So that should be showing up now and it's part of the new Teams and Outlook integration features that were announced at Ignite in November last year. This next new feature I'm gonna show you allows you to send one post across multiple channels in different teams. This is how you do it. You come to the new post and you choose this format button here. 
then when the window expands, you'll see this post in multiple channels button. When you press that, you'll see a two line appear and you can see that it's currently addressed to the channel that I'm actually in, which is general. But what I can do is go to the select channels button here and then I can choose all the other channels I wanna to post to at the same time. So you can do it by site. If you wanna just go through and pick out the ones that you want. You can also search. So if I put in a keyword, it will find any channels with that keyword in. And I can also do a select all just to select everything. So once I've got all the channels that I'm interested in, I hit the update button. And now you can see that the two line has all the channels that I've just chosen from the select channels window. All I have to do now is write my post and then post. Now that single post will be distributed to all the channels across all the teams. So the next feature I wanna show you is a compliance feature for Microsoft Teams. And it allows us to apply a sensitivity label to the team to restrict the use, to make sure that it's compliant with whatever governance we have in place. For example, if I go to the join or create team button and then create a team, if I choose build a team from scratch, you'll see that I've configured this sensitivity label at the top here. And if I drop this down, I've created two labels, one called secret, one called top secret. Notice now with no sensitivity label set, I can choose between private, public, or org-wide teams. But if I choose the secret label, notice now that the privacy is restricted to only private. That's because the label I've used has restricted the use of the teams. So now when I choose private, I can name the team and then create it. And you'll notice now in the top right hand corner, it has a category of secret. This feature is enabled using the compliance center in Office 365. Your administrator can create labels that can then be used when you create your teams. So for example, I'm here in the compliance center and the secret label that I just used on my team is here. And if I select it and edit the label, there's a site and group settings page that I can use to add some settings to that label. If you remember when we were creating our team and we chose the secret label, we could only see private or choose private as an option. That's the setting here. So I chose private instead of public or none. I've been specific about what type of privacy the team must have. And I can also be specific around external users. So if I don't want external users to access the team, I can set that here too. And I've got some control over what devices as well. A new feature you should be seeing by now is the SharePoint home site. A SharePoint home site is like the intranet homepage for your organization. You can set any communication site to be your home site and it does a couple of cool things which really make moving around SharePoint that much easier. Let me try and explain with a demonstration. In this organization, I've made the Work at Contoso site my home site. And you'll notice that the Work at Contoso site is actually also a hub site. That means it's in the middle of a hub surrounded by a bunch of other sites like news, brand, executive corner, and so on. Because it's a hub site, it manages a navigation bar along the top here. And whenever I move to any of these other sites like news, the navigation bar follows along with it and also the colors and so on. So I can move across any of these sites and it will have a common navigation. So that makes the moving around the internet that much easier for everybody. Now setting a home site also means that when I go to the SharePoint app, or if I go to the Office 365 homepage and choose SharePoint from there, you'll notice now that that page also has the common look and feel. So you can see I've got my navigation, I've got my colors. So because I've set Work at Contoso as my home site, when I use the SharePoint app, I still see the common navigation and the colors. So it just makes the whole experience for the user that much more seamless and usable. The other thing it does is changes the SharePoint app. So if you're using the SharePoint app on a device like a tablet or a phone, 
you'll see the home button in the top right hand corner. And when I press that, it will take me directly to the Work at Contoso homepage, which is my home site. So the next new feature is audience targeting. This is something that used to be in SharePoint Online, but has been updated to work with modern pages. And essentially what it does is filters what's in the page to different groups. So I can be specific about what I want people to see. As a quick example, I've got the same page here loaded in two different browsers. Here I'm looking at it as Matt. And in this news page here, I've got a carousel with four pieces of news in it. Now, if I switch to Edge here, I'm logged in now as a guy called Bob, and Bob sees only three pieces of news. So he doesn't see that audience test page because I've filtered it out so Bob doesn't see it, but I do. I'll go into more detail in a separate video on the channel soon, but I'll leave some links in the description so you can go and have a look for yourself. Microsoft's also promoting the next steps button quite heavily at the moment. Uh, the next steps button is a couple of options for things to do when you first start to use your team site. So for example, if I hit next steps, which is this little button at the top here in the right hand side, I've got options to add members and create a new post. So things I would do when I immediately set up my team site. Now, this isn't available on communication sites as far as I can tell. Another good use of this button is for sites that aren't already connected to a group, an Office 365 group. So in this case, I've got a classic site that isn't connected to a group. And when I hit the next steps button, I've got this button as well, which gives you the ability to actually create a group. It says add apps to your site. So if, when I press it, it actually takes me through the process of creating a group. So if I go, let's get started. Ask me what the group name's gonna be called and whether I want it to be private and if there's additional owners and members. And then when it's finished creating the group, I can finish the process. And now this site is a group connected site that's connected to an Office 365 group. It has group membership, just like any other team site would. And it's also got the other features like Planner. And you'll see down here now, I can also connect it to Microsoft Teams. So for those SharePoint sites that aren't already group connected, next steps button allows you to do that Now notice now i click on next steps that button's gone and i've got some other options here like adding members so apparently microsoft are going to be developing the next steps button so it has more uses in the future we'll keep an eye on that and let you know as they do so microsoft also announced at the end of january that we can now do custom search results pages in sharepoint search so this is new because previously we could only do this with Classic and now they've introduced some extensions to SharePoint that allow us to create new modern search results pages. So they've already published a good demonstration which is available now. I'll put the links in the description and later on I'll do a review of it on my channel as well. Okay, that's your lot. That's March Radar wrapped up. Thank you so much for watching. Please let us know in the comments what you'd like to see in next month's show and I'll see you then.